Greetings, my name is Christopher Breen, student at ASU CSC 535 Mobile Computing. In this video, what I want to talk about is the week six practice question regarding power consumption. So we're going to start out here. We have our problem. We have our setup with the formulas provided in the course. And most of this is coming straight from the question. So we have our different methods, our eager and lazy Wi-Fi and 4G, our CPU execution times, the data size, the bandwidth, uh, all coming directly from the question, our bold numbers here. Communication time is simply the data size divided by the bandwidth, gives us our 40 seconds. And then for our utilization, that is simply the CPU execution time divided by the total time, total time being a combination of the communications time and execution time as our application starts out executing and then transitions into communicating. Active radio power from the problem and active radio power, CPU, active power, CPU, idle power, again, all coming from the question. An important concept to understand before we get into the CPU power is that this CPU active is in addition to the idle. The idle uh, is, is constant from, from time zero until the application finishes. The CPU is constantly drawing the seven and then it will, in addition to that seven, draw another five during those periods when it is active. So for the formula that we were provided for CPU, what this does is this gives us an average, and that's important to, to understand. And, and the way that works is we're getting the idle power as a constant, uh, and we can do that because we're, we're averaging, right? So it's seven throughout the entire uh, period that the application is running, seven per uh, unit of time. And then we are going to add that to the active power times the utilization. All right. And so we end up with the average CPU uh, power. And we do the same thing for radio power. Remember, again, we're getting an average here. So we're going to have our communication time times the uh, radio power plus our inactive radio power times our execution time because our CPU execution time is our um, radio inactive time. And then we're going to divide that by the total time in order to get another average. We add our two averages together and we get a total average. We carry that down for all the methods and we're done. All right, so we are able to answer this question with our 79.4, 77.8, 194.4, 192.7. And that's all great until we need to answer additional types of, of questions. Then we realize that these formulas up here were not enough and we need to generate some, some new ones. So let's do that. So down here, we have a very similar setup. We have our methods. We have transposed the numbers from our problem. CPU active time, COM active time. Um, I've taken the, and for COM active time, I abbreviated a step here. I just took the data size divided by the bandwidth instead of separate columns, but that's our same number. Uh, I did explicitly add those two together so we can see the total app time. And then these numbers are transposed, the radioactive power, inactive power, CPU active, CPU idle, uh, no changes there. Now here we're going to do something a little bit different in order to get total energy, total energy, not average, um, in order to answer some, some different questions. So to figure out our total energy, what we're going to do is take our CPU active time. We're going to multiply that by the CPU active power. And then we're going to add that to the CPU idle power times the total time, right? Because remember, the active time is idle plus active, not just active. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if our active was, was less than the idle, right? So that gives us our uh, total CPU energy. We do the same thing uh, or a very similar thing for the radio. We're going to take 
our radioactive power times the uh, radioactive time, add that to the radio inactive power times the CPU active time. CPU active is the same as radio inactive time. And then that gives us our total energy for the radio. We add those uh, two together and that gives us a total energy. In order to figure out the average energy, uh, we simply take our total energy, divide it by the total time that we spent uh, running the app, and that gives us our same numbers, right? 79.4, 77.8, and so on. And you'll see that those match here. But now how do we answer some additional questions? Right? So we've answered average uh, power consumption and in this case, the average power power is essentially the rate of uh, energy consumption. So this number uh, makes sense. That's that's validated, All right? So now let's look at our next question here. Uh, what is the most energy efficient? Well, the most energy efficient is whichever method runs its entire application utilizing the least amount of energy. So in this case, our total energy was 3334. That's the lowest number for eager Wi-Fi. So eager Wi-Fi is the most energy efficient. Now this next one gets a little tricky. Uh, what, which has the highest maximum power consumption, right? So highest maximum power consumption. So remember, there is a there is a very big difference between power and energy. So what do we mean? By maximum power we can't just come down here find this maximum energy lazy 4g and call this maximum power uh, that's not the same thing and I'm gonna I'm gonna break this one down a little bit more because it can get uh, confusing so here um, our green line is the power and we remember from the videos that the area under the curve is the energy Right. And normally our power consumption, our CPU utilization, it would be this continuous uh, value. We wouldn't have these discrete values like we're given in the problem. So that's what we learned in, in the videos. Uh, and it talked about the constant that we use to figure out utilization and all that. But we don't have to worry about this for our problems. This is the uh, style that we're going to use when we have these discrete values that instantly change uh, from on to, to off. So here on the blue line, we have our radio, and then on the green line, we have our CPU. So for our uh, radio energy, right, and since area under the curve, when it's not a curve and it's a straight line, is pretty simple. It's just height times width, right, uh, height times width. And then we can separate these into two different uh, rectangles, add them together, and that's the area under the line. So we have our uh, two seconds times the 15, for our uh, power, the rate of energy, and then we add that to our 40 seconds times the 75 for our power there. Add that all together and we get our 3030. And that is what we saw down here. So radio energy total was 3030. Energy for the CPU, likewise, two seconds tw times 12, right? Because it's seven idle plus another five when it's active. And then we're going to add that to our 40 uh, times the 7. And that gives us the 304 added to the 33, 34, like we saw over here. Right? So maximum uh, power. So how do we figure out maximum power? Well, the maximum power at any given time is, is the combination of your CPU and radio at that, at that moment. Right? So here, when the CPU is active and the radio is inactive, your power is 27, the 12 plus the 15. When the CPU is inactive and the radio is active, your power is the seven plus the 75s, 82, right? So the maximum power for this scenario would be 82. And we have that over here. And how do we figure that out with the formulas? Simple. We just use the max uh, formula, take the radioactive power, add it to the CPU idle power, 
that's one value, or we look at the other scenario <clears throat> when the radio is inactive, take its power, add that to the CPU active power plus the CPU idle power, because remember those numbers go together when it's active. The larger number of those is what ends up over here. Our larger number was 82. Now, the only problem with that is that you'll see this doesn't change between our eager and lazy scenarios right and the reason for that is that in your eager and lazy these values don't change at all all you have done is extended the time that you are actively using the cpu which extends the overall time so it averages out to be lower but um, the the highest maximum is going to be the same right so if we're given a list and we have to choose between these, how do you choose between those? I believe what the question may be trying to ask us or may should have been worded was what is the highest total energy consumption? And then if they're asking the highest total energy consumption, then we could use our total energy, that area under the curve, and we could say definitively that it's lazy uh, 4G. Right? Otherwise, our max power would be either one of these, the 4G at 197, eager, or lazy. All right. And I'm going to use another example to try to break this down. So if we look at speed, right, speed is the distance per unit of time, and power is the energy per unit of time. So we can look at speed here as being equivalent to our power, and then we can look at uh, the distance uh, underneath here as being equivalent to the energy, right? So if we're traveling, let's say we're traveling for 20 seconds uh, and we're going 10 meters per second for 10 seconds and then we instantaneously jump up to 20 uh, meters per second for another 10 seconds, right? Half the time we're at 10, half the time we're at 20. This formula should make sense to everybody just without even thinking about it. Our average speed is going to be 15 meters per second. Our max speed is going to be wherever we were going the fastest, which is in the second half of our stretch here in which we were doing 20 meters per second. That is our max speed. We would not say that our max speed is 300. We would not take 10 by 10, 100, another 10 by 20, 200, add those together, 300. Max speed is not 300. Our distance is 300. Our energy is 300 right now it just so turns out that if you take that 300 and you divide it by the 20 to get an average well now you're right back at 15 so when we're talking averages it really doesn't matter if the question says power or energy power being the rate of energy you average it over the whole time you, you end up with the same thing right but the important thing here is that your max is going to be whatever point in time you have the most power. And if we look at these scenarios again, eager and lazy, there is no difference. CPU power idle and radio power active is gonna be that moment in the application when it has the maximum uh, power. Right. So that answers those two questions. Shortest execution time, that one's simple enough. CPU active plus the communication active so eager Wi-Fi would have the shortest execution. And then highest average power consumption, right? Because we're looking at average power consumption, it really doesn't matter if this is power uh, or energy, we could answer the same way. And we have our average uh, numbers here. This time we're looking for the maximum 194. So this would be eager 4G for the highest average power consumption. And I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.